Hey, this is Fiona, and I wanted to do a book review on the Ayahuasca Test Pilots Handbook by Chris Killham. So basically, this is like an introduction to ayahuasca and the whole experience if you're interested in going on a journey or if you've already had your journey to kind of give you perspective. So basically, ayahuasca was kind of not super big, um, you know, sort of the 1980s and the 1990s, it kind of became more popular. But, um, you know, it's, it's ayahuasca is basically a plant, it's two plants mixed together. You have your capi vine, which is the MAO inhibitor, and then you have the um, chacruna, which is the DMT plant. So when combined together, it's basically, you know, if you take DMT, your body actually produces DMT on its own, but you absorb it, you know, otherwise you'd be tripping all day long. So you have the MAO inhibitor, which basically prevents um, the body from absorbing all the DMT. So you end up having a six hour uh, journey, um, basically uh, the DMT experience. And they say that like you produce DMT a lot when you're first born and also when you die. So this is known as the medicine you know, people go to South America because it's like, you know, it's legal there. It's actually not really legal um, anywhere else unless you go to uh, like a church of shaman or something. I think there's like two churches that allow ayahuasca. I think they're in um, Oregon. So yeah, basically Chris gives you kind of like a roadmap of what to expect. So, you know, you always want to have an intention, but not an expectation for, for when you go on your journey. Um, you know, you ask the ayahuasca for what you want. You know, what do you want healing on? What do you want answers on? Um, there's usually a dieta that you have to follow for a week. Um, if you're on any sort of medications, antidepressants or sleeping pills, I think they make you get off of those like maybe two to four weeks before you journey. Um, but the whole dieta is basically a, a protocol of like things that you're supposed to eat, uh, activities that you're supposed to do, things that you're supposed to avoid. So you're supposed to avoid like violent films and sexual activity. You're supposed to get exercise and lots of sleep and rest and kind of minimize your interaction with people before you go. And also, you know, you're supposed to avoid all red meat. You're supposed to avoid sugar, salt, oil, um, you know, anything processed, anything, you know, gluten heavy pastry stuff, you want to avoid all that stuff. You're supposed to stick to mostly like raw vegan diet for the most part and drink lots of water. And these are just what the plant medicine has told, you know, like this is what, how you should prepare. You want to get all the gunk out of your body, you know, prepare for this journey because you will be most likely purging uh, throughout the, the journey and you want your system as clean as possible. So um, Chris kind of talks about like the different plants that are, you know, the Amazon has so many plants, like healing plants, you know, it's kind of amazing how ayahuasca was discovered because it's basically the plant told the shaman, you know, the mix these two plants together out of the millions of plants that are in the Amazon. It's like these two plants when put together, create this incredible experience. And, you know, they say that ayahuasca is kind of like the the very the I don't know I don't know how to describe it, like the most intense uh, of the psychedelic uh, drugs you know it's like um, you know it's like DMT but it's like for six hours long when I did mushrooms like and then I did ayahuasca ayahuasca was way more intense than 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 any of the mushroom journeys I was on um, so they say that you know ayahuasca journey is like worth 10 years of therapy you know it's like people come to do these journeys because there's usually some big crisis in their life someone's passed they're they're uh, broken up with their their lover there's a big uh, life change or something like that and so they say that this is the medicine um there's no prescription there's no drug it, no doctor it's like the, the ayahuasca will get in there and do the healing uh, it'll open you up to new realms, it'll crack you open, your heart will be open, you'll feel basically all the things in your body. It basically gets you in your body. Whereas a lot of stuff like cannabis will take you out of your body. Ayahuasca gets you like right in your body. So you, um, you, can't, uh, you can't run away from stuff. 
it's, it's basically like shining a magnifying glass on your life. So, um, yeah, and he, he's talked about, you know, he talks about kind of like how, how it works. You know, you mix the plants together, you have to boil them and you can add other herbs to the mixture. Um, but there's some dangerous, uh, plants that he talked about. Um, and he says, uh, you know, there's, um, DMT plays a valuable role in ayahuasca. It is not the source of visions, but rather an agent that cracks open the mind, allowing interdimensional consciousness to occur more freely with ensuing visions of all types. I like to think of DMT as a key that opens locks in the mind, throwing open what Aldous Huxley referred to as the doors of perception. So, you know, like DMT usually only lasts for 20 minutes or so just because your liver absorbs it or breaks it down. And so it's like you have the MAO inhibitor, the cappy vine, which blocks that from being absorbed uh, so quickly. Um, there's also, you know, he talks about the whole maloka, that's like the ceremonial space, it's like circular, you have the shaman, and he goes really in depth about like, you know, finding the right people to work with. You don't want to just go to some random group that's doing ayahuasca journeys. There's a lot of people kind of taking advantage of, of uh, people that are wanting to uh, journey, learn more about themselves. So you got to really be careful about that. Um, he talks about the ayahuasca preparation, the flavor of the ayahuasca. And it's, I remember it being pretty hard to swallow, like drinking it made me want to throw up. It was it was just very earthy. It's like, some people said it's like um, putting a frog in a blender and then drinking that. That's what it tastes like. And, um, you know, you have the mapacho tobacco smoke, which is like Amazon tobacco. And they usually blow that smoke on the ayahuasca as well as the people to kind of clear the space uh, to kind of make it a safe sanctuary for people to journey. Because when you're on ayahuasca, you're wide open. You're cracked wide open so there's no um I what I was a little bit confused was because everyone's stuff is all out in the open and like you could like mix astral bodies and take on potentially take on other people's uh energetic stuff if you're not like don't have like a protection um while you kind of do all this because you're just wide open um he talks about uh what else does he talk about? Um, yeah, the purging process. So you'll be, not everyone throws up, but you know, your body, you're, you're likely to have, uh, be purging quite a bit, throwing up and having diarrhea. And um, let me show you, this is the cappy vine. So this is the MAO inhibitor, blocks the, the uh, chacruna from being, um, or the DMT from being broken down by the liver. And then you have the chacruna leaves, which are these. Look at that. So it's a mixture of two plants. They have to boil them together like that for hours. And then once it's cooked and concentrated, um, and you know, you don't really know the exact, you know, I think like the dosage, it's kind of very intuitive. Like I remember when, um, the shamans for me, for my experience, it was just like pouring a little of this and a little of this liquid together. And it was kind of very much eyeball. So it was like, you don't know how much you're going to get. Um, and, uh, this is the Maloka. This is where you have the journey circular kind of hut. Um, and then he goes into the shaman and becoming, becoming a shaman is like a, a very rigorous, you know, thing. It's like, takes years to do it. You have to be really in tune with the spirit world because you're going to be setting the space, the energy, and you're also going to be kind of communicating with these different, um, spirits and, and, you know, like the shaman, they see spirit in the soul of, of like plants, of animals, of everything. So it's like they become super uh, clairvoyant and sensitive. So it's actually like a true shaman's path, like takes like a lifetime, it seems like. And it's not just some something that people can just do. There's a lot of training in it. Um, 
so yeah you know he talks about like finding the right group to work with and uh you know don't don't mix it with the other stuff you don't want to mix it with the pharmaceutical drugs antidepressants anti-anxiety stuff mao inhibitors amphetamines um a sedatives or sleeping pills because it's like ayahuasca by itself is very potent like i don't understand why you would mix it and um they're saying that uh there have been deaths you know when people don't follow the dieta and they're taking other medications and they the medications um don't mix well with the ayahuasca so um yeah, yeah, it's definitely something that it's not for everyone, but for those that are interested or called to doing ayahuasca, it's a very, can be a very powerful thing. So overall, you know, oh, he also talks about like the integration. So after your experience, you know, integrating what you've kind of uh, experienced during your journey is really important. So, you know, not just going and telling everyone about your journey, but allowing yourself to have that for yourself. You know, journaling, spending time by yourself in nature, reflecting, um, staying away from social media and all that stuff is going to be important just because it cracks you open and it reveals things to yourself that, uh, you know, might be big things that you want to change about your life and uh, that stuff needs time to be integrated. So being nice to yourself and, you know, taking like a bubble bath or getting exercise but it's very important that you you like three days afterwards like just minimize don't don't work for three days after and try to minimize interacting with people just so that you can have your experience for yourself you don't get too caught up in other people's worlds so this was a great movie or not movie what am I talking about this is a great book <laughs> um so I highly recommend it it's a good beginner's kind of entryway into the ayahuasca experience there's a def there's definitely a lot of other books out there that kind of go more in depth but this is a really good starters book so I highly recommend it if you're interested in ayahuasca or um, you've journeyed and want to know more about your experience so there it is